to John Brady. Thanks, uh, last count, Carla. Taoiseach, on the back of a century that witnessed two global conflagrations, two world wars which led to the slaughter of tens of millions of people, the European project was born out of a design committed to making war not merely unthinkable, but materially impossible. The Europe that emerged out of this surge to achieve a peaceful coexistence has allowed the formerly belligerent nations of Western Europe to not only coexist, but to prosper in a spirit of mutual dependency. With such success and prosperity comes responsibility. However, Europeans have differing views as to how this should be allowed to manifest itself. There are amongst those at the helm of the political leadership of the EU who believe that the EU must develop a degree of military muscle, that the EU needs to develop its own independent military capacity. Some suggest that there are already plans in place to send EU forces into Mo Mozambique by the end of this year to protect French mining interests in a gas-rich province. And the irony of sending European troops back to, back, back to what was a, a former Portuguese colony to preserve European interests is apparently lost on Europe's politicians. But there are those too who believe that it is more incumbent on the European Union to focus on the development of moral muscle. And I do not believe that there is any other issue where the absence of moral intent is felt more keenly than on the issue of the plight of the Palestinian people. The International Criminal Court has recently opened an investigation into Israel for war crimes. And last week, the Human Rights Watch, a reputable and respected international organization, laid the accusation of gross human rights abuse, that is the policy of apartheid, at the feet of the Israeli state. And the various responses we have witnessed tell their own tale. The EU offered a solitary response, possessed of wordy sediment, but little of tangible consequences for Israel for continuing with its abhorrent policy. And the Irish government decided to sit on its hands again and provocate, hiding behind government attempts at deciphering the legal meaning of the word apartheid. One could argue that there is little time for such niceties when an Israeli army bulldozer is bearing down on your family home, threatening all that you hold there. And then we have the Israeli response, an arrogant dismissal, followed by an assault on the third holiest site within the religion of Islam, leading to the injury and assault of hundreds of Palestinians. An assault on Gaza with two dozen deaths, including nine children. The EU was very quick to impose sanctions on, on Russia for their actions in Crimea. And the time for the Irish government sitting on its hands is finished. And it's not a, a time for words, it's a time for action. And at the very least, we need to see the same array of sanctions that were put on Russia being put on the table in this instance such as the censoring of diplomatic relations, the freezing of assets and travel for individuals directly implicated in Israeli, in illegal Israeli practices, the potential restructuring of EU-Israel relations, a restriction of economic cooperation, such as would impact on Horizon 2021 to 27 uh, program. These are only some of the many actions and options open to both the Irish government and the EU. Concurrent to this, we need to see the Irish government take this issue to the UN Security Council as a matter of urgency. And we need to call for an emergency session and for the public implementation of all the UN resolutions on Jerusalem and occupied Palestine. It is critical to note that the Palestinian people are a people marked for complete erasure and the Israeli government wished to force them off their land to reduce their existence and desperate, to desperate groups struggling to survive on a few dozen Bantusmans, removing the potential for a two-state solution, condemning what will be left of the Palestinian people to the perpetual state of refugee in what is legally their own country. The time 
for the Irish government to act is now. We don't need more meaningless words. We need action and action now. Gordon